Welcome to doing philosophy. Where you learn to philosophize about the big ideas. I'm your host, Alan McPhee. Today, I want to focus on the idea of truth. Truth is essential in relationships. Truth is essential in the work environment. Truth is essential in the hospital. And truth is the foundation of philosophizing. Today, we're going to explore the idea of truth and try to hash out a general understanding of how truth manifests itself. <clears throat> we're going to dive in using uh, meta philosophy. Don't be concerned about this um, PowerPoint you see in front of you. It illustrates uh, the big ideas um, in this particular area when you're looking at the history and the methodology of doing philosophy. And I want to look at truth and its significance, so, but I want to look at truth in the context of doing philosophy. Because remember, on this side, you learn to do philosophy. And the foundation of doing philosophy is learning through reason, okay? So I want to go into here and talk about reasoning. When you're reasoning, you're using information. And you're taking that information that is true and seeing what it, that truth implies. That's the process of reasoning. You could have rational beliefs, rational opinion, rational knowledge. Not every knowledge, for example, is uh, irrational. If you see something in front of you, there's a fire hydrant right there in front of you, then you know in fact. You don't have to sit and reason about it. You just have to open your eyes and recognize what's in front of you. But reasoning is a process. And what we want to do is take you um, into the essence of that process. <clears throat> To reason, you have a strong sense of truth and a strong sense of logic. The most significant part here is that when you're doing philosophy, you're trying to understand how your mind processes information and then use that process to do better job at reasoning, critical thinking, and solving problems. It doesn't have to be difficult. You think already, just need to bring into more understanding and it could be a lot of fun. At least when I philosophize, I have fun. It's not always easy, I'm not saying that, right? So when we deep dive into the idea of truth, this is what I want you to look at, right? This is a word, right? It's a word. So we're trying to say, what's the definition of that word? How would you define this word truth, all right? But it's so complicated, we don't want to put a simple definition. We're going to say, what are some of the big ideas, okay, essential characteristics that's connected with this word truth? Um, <clears throat> first two that come to mind are property of ideas. Ideas represent information of the mind. So when we have an information in our mind, for example, there is a man on the roof of this building. This is a statement I made. There's a man on the roof of this building. Now I hear the word, you hear the word, it's a statement. In my mind, it's an idea. I can treat these words as true or false. And treating it true or false is called a conviction. I'm convinced that these words are true. These ideas, this bit of information, true or false. Why are you convinced? That's the study of the truth. Why are you convinced? But before you ask why, you must raise this issue here. Um, <clears throat> truth becomes what we call an abstract entity. Truth is not the information itself. Truth is a word, a concept that evaluates other words and other concepts. That's what it does, evaluates other words and other concepts. It's called abstract, something that is real, but doesn't have stuff. It's just a way we understand the world, basically, right? And the fundamental understanding is shown in, on the right side of the screen in front of you, which is an indicator of what is real. If the statement, there is um, a man on the roof of this building is true, it means the words in my head really, really describe the reality out there. Just like if I say um, Pegasus 
unicorns fly. Okay, or unicorns fly. Okay, there's a magical unicorn is flying. I made the statement. Many people think it to be false, but you understand the meaning. Understanding and truth are different. To say a unicorn fly is true means that somehow those words really describe the physical reality around us. Um, <clears throat> sometime in the future, I would like to deep dive into this idea of truth and try to get a philosophical understanding, the traditional classical understanding of truth. For right now, I want to focus on something else. This word truth is often confused and misunderstood because it's not seen as a category, okay? Like fruit, right? <clears throat> the word fruit is a category. Bananas are fruits, mangoes are fruit, fruits, um, pears are fruits. They all have specific, specific types of fruits. If you go in the world to try and find fruit itself, it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as fruit existing. You only have examples of it. So the word captures a certain category that are really there. The word truth itself is a, is a type of category, or at least it can be seen in that way. I want to illustrate some concepts that we use day to day in our conversation, which are different types of truth. And then I want to talk about them a little bit, okay? Here's some words that we use all the time. Knowledge, facts, Okay, one of our favorite word facts. Opinions, we all have opinions, and philosophy begins with opinions. So if you're listening to me right now, you have opinions, you're the right, you're starting just right. Uh, beliefs, okay, a word we use every day. Conclusions, okay, uh, we use, I use that every day. Uh, theories, mm, a word we also use a lot. And perceptions, a word we use, but a lot of people don't like using so much. And intuitions. All of these concepts here, vocabulary words we use every day, they are all types of truths. Okay, they are specific types of truths to which we can get, give a clear, concise understanding how they work. They all point out things that we in general can accept and work with, or at least we know their meaning. And then, but and at the same time, they all capture the flavor of what truth is. Like when you use the word knowledge, belief, and opinion, when you when the speaker uses those words, they're sharing their confidence in the information. If I say it's my opinion, there's a man on the roof of this building. I'm telling you, I'm not really sure. I'm, I think it's it's true true for me only. If I say I believe. There's a man who's building. I'm showing more confidence. There's a probability. And if I say I know, I'm very definite, I'm very certain. Let's think about something else, all right? It's going to rain outside. It's raining outside. It's my opinion, it's raining outside. I'm not at, looking at through a window. It's just my opinion. That means it's true for me. If I say I believe it's going to rain outside, that means the probability it's going to rain. There's a likelihood. But if I say, I know it's going to rain, most of you should say, how the heck do you know that? Because most people by now know that predicting the weather, predicting when it's going to rain is a probabilistic operation. Okay? Meteorologists use probability, which means meteorologists give you good beliefs about the weather. No meteorologist is going to say, I know. That is, I'm very certain it's going to rain, or it's raining right now, unless you're standing outside. So all of these different concepts have different senses of truth. Facts deal with truth that you directly experience with one of your five senses, okay? One of my favorite concepts of truth here is the notion of an intuition. An intuition is the mind's grasp of an inner truth. Intuition means inner truth. Sometimes it's called an innate truth. You're born with it. What are some of the examples of inner truth? For example, you may know when you're hungry, you know you like a particular person or you like a particular movie. You know that. You went to see Black Panther. You know you like, in fact, you know you love that movie. You're with me, yes. Okay? And so if someone say that's not a fact, you say, yes, it's not a fact, but it is true for me. Okay? I saw the movie and I know how I reacted to it and I love that movie. Intuitions are not facts, 
but they are really, really true. And in philosophy, one of the things that we must do is recognize the various types of truth. This is just some of them. Recognize various types of truth. What they're trying to convey us about the truth, like with knowledge, belief, and opinion, or like we're looking at facts, which is heavily evidence-based. Facts, I can experience one of my five senses. Intuition is an inner truth, something that's really true for some person, or at least it's true for me or true for you, and I know, or I have a belief about it. I can tell you, I believe I might like Chinese um, cucumbers. I haven't tried them yet, but I believe I might like them because I like cucumbers. Mm. So in philosophy, one of the most significant things we must do is to learn to harness a general understanding of different types of truths. And if that understanding goes, gets deep enough, eventually, eventually you're going to see that fable truths that the great philosophers are always seeking. Well, that's it for the day. I think I went deep enough. I highly recommend that you repeat uh, this, uh, this uh, video a couple of times. And if you have any comments or you want me to focus on something else, and please note, I mean, this starting to unravel the notion of truth. Anyone, this concept of it can be, um, have a video done on it by itself. But if you have any questions, any comments, please leave a comment down below. I'll talk to you next time. This is your favorite philosopher, I'm going to say. Well, favorite philosopher. That's probably not right. Well, maybe. I, I hope I'm your favorite philosopher. All right. See you next time. Take care. Bye.